seats quickly, please, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Maddox Sands making her 13th main draw appearance here at the Open. She has never made it past the second round, serving in the far court to start the second round match here on Armstrong. Well, these uh, two girls had to wait quite a long time before they came on. They might have really expected that they were going to come on court after four sets of Marty's fish. And then it went to a fifth. And with the heat, you know, you get all psyched up and then you have to slow down again. And now it looks like it's a little breezy out there. We noted the wind picking up. A few more miles per hour in comparison to the last few days. We'll see how it impacts the ball toss on the serve. Well, you know, you really like to have some decent rallies early in a match to get your feel. And we've seen <laughs> we've seen three mishits from Coco and one from Magic Sands. So <laughs> there has not been anything resembling a rally as yet. It did not deter Coco van der Wey that she had framed her previous three shots. Goes for broke on this and connect, she does. We know that van der Wey is going to go for it irrespective of the circumstances. That's her approach. And Maddox Sands able to ease in with a hold at 30 to start this second round match. Always difficult playing another country woman. And then, as a matter of fact, there are four matches on today which are, are between people from the same country. Three with Americans and uh, also the Polish uh, player Agnieszka Radwanska is playing another young Polish player. So it's all, that's always difficult to do. Already been a good day for American women. Madison Brengel and Madison Keys already prevailing. Coco van der They would have practiced quite a long time ago, one assumes, in conditions which might be just about the same. It hasn't changed much today. It's just uh, been humid and hot right from the word go. Well, I, I don't think that's a 
bad thing that she missed that ball. She came in in the previous game, did Coco and in that one, and she knows that uh, Bethany will give her some opportunities to come in. Then she herself, Coco, has hit some aggressive shots. She'll get some floaters. And if you do it at the beginning of a match, you get more comfortable. If you wait till at the end, you feel like a stranger doing it. For casual fans who don't know the athletic prowess of the Vandeweghe family, Mother Tanya, Olympic swimmer for the United States in 1976, then eight years later, represented her country in volleyball in 1984. Grandfather Ernie played for the New York Knicks in the NBA. Uncle Kiki, also a professional basketball player, later a GM. Half a chance at 1530. First double of the match, draws a couple break points. Well, although it's very humid and it's, you know, the air is not, it's not clear by any means, it's still very bright. And serving second, I'm surprised that uh, she chose the sunny end to serve from. Snuck that one just inside the line. The speed of foot has really improved in the last, uh, I would say even six months, certainly in the last year. Second double of the game, hands. Maddox hands the break to Love here in the first set. Well, again, saying that it's always tough playing somebody from your own country, and when you're the ranked higher player, and by a considerable amount, that does make you a little nervous. Maddox hands knows that uh, this would just be a fantastic win for her. It would really be an upset if she could come off with it. So. In other words, Coco Vandeweghe feeling the pressure and needing to settle down very quickly. I, I have a feeling that both of them are a, a little, 15. almost like a little over anxious. It's like they've been waiting for so long to go on and then they, in a, I feel particularly with Coco, she's in a little bit of a rush. Got to sit through that marathon match between Marty Fish and Feliciano Lopez, Spaniard one in five. I like the fans when Fish serve for it, 5-4 in the fourth. Both players might have thought they'd be going on soon. Well, that's right. Oh. Good serve, good return, but that was definitely a, an unforced error. Fifteen thirty. How good is that? Solid combination going wide and comes in behind it nicely. I tell you, she really does know how to serve and volley. Doesn't do it... Uh, overdo it, but when she's in there, she hits some of the best volleys. Not what she needed. Couldn't keep it going with her first double fault. And now a break back point. Coco took her eye off the ball, seeing Maddox Sands coming in. 
I would rate her volleying as one of the absolute best in the women's game. And that volleying skill has served her so well in doubles. It really has. I'm thinking of the other doubles players when Martina Hingis won the women's doubles and the mix at Wimbledon. She said, well, I knew I could play doubles because I reckon I've got a better volley than almost anybody <laughs> out there. And, I, you know, I, I don't think that's just term boasting. I think it's very realistic. A fair assessment. Good body serve as Maddox Sands pushes aside the break chance to consolidate her break. Three love advantage here in the opening set. Here in Armstrong, a promising start for Bethany Maddox-Sands. Able to pick up the break in the second game and consolidate. Three love in the opening set, taking on Coco Vandeweghe. Number 45 in the world, got to number 32 in February of this year. Won her first title a year ago in the Netherlands. Coached by Craig Carden. As we take a look at Justin Sands, husband of Bethany. Well, a very good start for Bethany, and I, t I tell you, Coco needs to really start uh, connecting with the ball. She needs to play a good game right here because points have been disappearing rather rapidly. 6 foot 1, Van der Weer is 5 foot 6, Bethany. Yeah, you know, the toss is sometimes the hardest thing of a serve. Put the toss up in the right place, and it's quite easy to connect. Or maybe she just was waiting for the crowd to settle down. And actually, you know, I was saying she was rushing a little bit, so maybe it's a good thing mm -hmm. that she's being forced to slow down as long as she does, doesn't get impatient. Crowd making her a bit more methodical. She has missed. She's missed badly at the outset of this one. The first game, there were about three misses like that. And then even in the last game, there were a couple and a couple of double faults. So this is, a, this is the trouble with some of the players now. They just have such big games that they don't know how to modify them a little bit just to get themselves into the game. So good. I mean, she could tell that uh, Coco hadn't seen her sneak into the net. It's uh, s almost the best way of coming into the net these days. You can't come in very often on traditional approach shots, but you can sneak in so effectively. do need to know what you're doing at the net as far as uh, 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 placing yourself, putting yourself in the right position as well as execution. I 
was a rush shot again. Vandaway was broken in her first service game. More adversity here at Love 30. You recall she had a couple doubles on her way to being broken. Three break points. That's long. They've only been on the court for 16 minutes. Vandaway down a pair of breaks. It's all Maddox Sands for love here in the first. And for all of the talent that's undeniable for Vandaway, her biggest issue has been the wild fluctuations match to match. Well, I tell you, this is the nightmare scenario for Coco Vandaway because, or for any player, you can come on court and you just don't get into it early on. You know, there again, it was sort of a rushed shot. Somehow, you have to have the knack of uh, slowing your head down. So she's sort of walking fast to the, you know, she, and it, she's mad and, uh, and everything is rushed. I would bet her head is going, very quickly. Second double for Maddox Sands. Craig Cotton, their second in. Somehow he's got to get a message through to her to say, you know, just slow down. That was not even a thought out shot at all. You know, <laughs> you, you, sometimes, obviously in tennis, especially on quick courts with all the hard hitters, one of the intentions, immediately obvious intentions is, you know, I want to hit a winning shot, but sometimes you have to go about it. It's more positive to think I'm not gonna miss. Great looking shot with the delicate touch. There goes a flash of emotion from Coco Vandue as Maddox Sands consolidates the break and there goes the racket. Coco can play to the crowd with the best of them, but she's in a ton of trouble in this opening set. Five love Maddox Sands. I'll tell you, I, I mean, maybe she'll feel marginally better, but I, out, uh, yes, yes, but I, I don't know that uh, that will really start her off on the right track. Well, credit Maddox Sands for getting it done with degree of difficulty, and then slowly, Vandaway started to unravel, and then it fell apart quickly. I didn't hear the umpire give her a warning, but uh, she will get a warning. <laughs> well, Coco Vandewey needs to put on the brakes very, very smartly here because uh, the, those five games went in a hurry. On the other hand, you know, if you're in a match and you five love up and your opponent isn't even playing, hasn't had a ball in court, basically speaking, Seats. You know Thank that you things please, are going to change. So Thank Matic you. Sands has to just keep her focus and uh, really now she needs to expect somebody to be playing a little bit better by the second set. Time for available seat, please. Time. Well, watching Vandaway play a lot over the years, you're never certain which version of Coco you're going to get on a given day. But in large part, this has been the story of her summer post Wimbledon, which she had that brilliant run to the quarters and was able to compartmentalize. Lost first round New Haven, second round Cincinnati, first round Toronto, first round Washington, D.C. Trying to stay in this opening set, not get bageled here in New York City. That 
was an angry oh, shot. Baby. You know, she's doing her best using all sorts of different tactics to get her frustration out. Smacking the racket and uh, now smiling and, you know, and laughing at herself. But it's not out yet. Matic sense to miss that because you have the feeling that she is a very calculated player. She knows what she's doing. She understood the spin on that ball. Can't let pre. Quite a different, you know, when you think of Craig Carden working with Martina for so many years so successfully and Martina in many eyes being certainly uh, tying with the greatest players maybe Steffi Martina and Serena and, uh, and coming out for every match you know finding a way to win virtually every point being right in every point Martina was it must be quite a change Hooray. When you just don't get into a match at the beginning, you have to really fight to get yourself at least seeing the ball and feeling it by the end of the set. Tennis scoring is very forgiving. You've certainly got plenty of time to find your way back into a match. So Coco Vandeweghe on the board. Took her six games, but she finds a little bit of sink. Still, Maddox Sands looks to serve it out here. <laughs> now the crowd's in it too. Maddox Sands has really got to keep her end together. And we've seen Bethany enough over the years to know just how entertaining she can be when she chooses to as well. Could be a lot of drama before this one is done. She's beginning to press a little bit. That's what Van der Wey has to really fight against, just giving away points at this stage. Keep the ball in the court. Step in the right direction. No, that was such a good shot. I don't know if she intended to, to be as good as that. Well, she got a wee bit lucky with that shot, but she'll take it. Half a chance, 15-30. Confirmation from our chase review. Squarely in, caught the corner. Yeah. Perfect connection there from Coco. So this would be. Ah, oh, I was just thinking there was a big chance for her to really start stabilizing things. Still a chance. Yeah, one more look at the break. I 
don't th see that uh, Coco van der Wey is really moving that well at the moment. And when you're having a terrible day out there, when obviously the nerves kick in in the wrong way, you know, however they manifest themselves, but particularly this one, I think you have to make a conscious effort to hustle a bit more, move your feet, bend your knees. In other words, stick to the basics of the game. Gorgeous backhand drawing set point. Bethany Maddox Sands plays with such intelligence on the court. Good shot. Yes. It was quite a shot, generating a winner out of uh, something that wasn't obvious. Another beautiful backhand. And when she played Sloane Stevens the other day, the forehands seemed to match up pretty well, but Coco van der Wey was uh, winning the backhand battles hands down. Pounced on that second serve. A third break opportunity. And once more, van der Wey will get a peek at the second serve. Crushes that one down the line. Trying to fire herself up. Fly back in this match. 2-5 in the first. Find your seats quickly, please. Thank you. Take first available seat, please, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Time. Here on Armstrong, Coco Vandewey was in danger of being shut out in the opening set, was finally able to hold in game number six, fought off a set point to come up with the break. 2-5, looking to consolidate, taking on Bethany Maddox-Sands. It would be very Coco Vandewey-esque to make this opening set far more interesting. Well, in my mind, the big challenge for her is to make sure she wins this service game. So should she lose the next one, she starts off the second set serving first with that big serve of hers. And I was still mystified if she chose to return first rather than serve first, which I, I'm not quite sure about. She doesn't usually miss backhands.
Good things happen if you string a few shots together when you've got power and big shots and you've got, what, seven inches more height than your opponent. And a good effort by Bethany there. Staying solid. The toss tends to go over her head actually a bit too much. Yeah, and that one wasn't quite high enough. Third double fall for Vandeweghe draws a second set point. Too good. This, uh, that's better footwork. It helps to, you know, have something that makes you move your feet. And she really, ha having committed to forehand, she had to get out of the way quickly. Maddox Sands continues to play steady tennis. Set point number three. And if she can seize the break, also the Bonus of serving to start the second set. Sands puts it away and takes the opening set. An exchange of breaks to wrap up the set. 6-2 here on Armstrong. I would imagine that the unforced errors uh, would be vastly worse for Coco Van de Wey. And there you go. Almost three times as many. Now she's begun to hit a few winners too. So her winner count has gone up. So those uh, uh, are down at the bottom. But if you look at the first service percentages, uh, Matic Sand serving very nicely. And 66% of first serves going in, that's uh, about where you're hoping to be. It's pretty ambitious to be in the 70%, but so 66 is really good. And uh, for Coco, I mean, 48%, but only winning 34 out of 11 when she gets her first serve in. Vandaway had little to offer at the start of the match, broken in second and fourth service games. Lost her emotions. At the culmination of this point, takes it out in the rackets and then acknowledges the crowd. You want more, I'll give you more. Well, I'm just curious, you know, ES 
being initiated a, a novel idea which everybody thought was a little crazy, having the, somebody come on and interview Coca at the end of the first set when it was Pam Shriver, in fact. Uh, and she was quite eager to do it because she said afterwards, you know, she wanted to improve the fan experience and she thought it was interesting to know how players felt. Well, I'm not sure how her answers would be if, <laughs> right now. That was after she took the opening set Against when she Sloan faced Stevens. Sloane Stevens. Yeah, probably a different mindset today. And a full house coming in there. It's, it's, it's stadium has finished one match and is uh, open at the moment and Find your as so often you Louis Armstrong is and the place to be. It appeared Maddox Sands might be taking a restroom break. The chair was vacant last time we got a shot of her side of the court. I think she might be also going to change her shirt because uh, she was dripping. I mean, who isn't? Very, very humid day. Fine play by the player who isn't there. But it, it's actually totally a good idea from, I would have said both players could take a quick break, but uh, uh, maybe, maybe Coco's getting her break there. She's up in thinking that she should slow down a little bit, take a bit more time, just uh, reflect on things and just try to slow herself down because she was rushing like mad at the beginning of the first set. And we know that Bethany Maddox-Sands has to make the most of her singles play because she won't be able to play in doubles. Got the news that her partner, Lucy Safarova, had the abdominal injury that slowed her down in her singles loss to Lesia Serenko. And just looking there, once again, Coco Vanderwey is winning more points when she gets her, when she misses the first serve and gets that high kicking second serve in. Although I have to say that um, Maddox Sands is handling that uh, kicker pretty well, better than Sloane Seats, Stevens please. was. Thank you. And it's hard to miss. Bethany back with the date low towel. So, I think this is a complete restart for this match. Second set, Maddox Sands to serve. After Maddox Sands grabbed the break to cap the opening set, will serve the start, which she hopes will be the final set. By the way, with other ideas on the other end of the court. Why don't you, what did she say? I don't know, because I thought this was totally in a range. It was a pretty, just a decent stretch. The wind could be a factor, and that is actually the first overhead she's hit. Always the toughest one. question in my mind that uh, most of the errors come from Vanderway's forehand. Backhand is pretty solid. Forehand might be more dangerous. The backhand she rarely misses. Got it. Really 
an inferior an approach shot from Coco Vandeweghe. She played the points so well, she gets a short ball, but then puts in a very short approach shot. No first serves for Maddox Sands in this game. Bethany is used to wearing those high socks. I still would think that uh, on a day like this, it would make you even hotter. Maddox Sands simply unable to get the first serve in in this game. Still a chance to take it to 15. That's uh, taking your life in your hands somewhat if you serve a second serve with, uh, well, I mean, it wasn't that slow, 89 for a serve out wide, but it was right in the hitting zone, serving to the forehand on that second serve. Game Play the angles well there. A hold at 30 as Bethany Maddox Sands maintains her momentum after cruising in the initial set 6-2. And while she's done in doubles, because Lucy Safarova is dealing with the abdominal injury, will play mixed doubles with Sam Query here at the Open. And we know that Maddox Sands has shined in mix as well, won the French this year. So much of that comes down to the selection of a good partner helps to play with Mike Bryant. <laughs> if you look around, Mike, are you available? I'll take Bob. Either one, we're okay. <laughs> I would think Sam Query would be pretty effective too. You, yeah. Sam, all you have to do is whack your first <laughs> serve in. Uh, I'll do the rest at the net, but get a few returns and just take a few chances. This is quite a critical game, actually particularly for Matic Sands because she's uh, got Vanderway where she wants her at the moment, but it, the balance could change very easily. But don't we all know that problem with a toss going over your head? Right. It's something that she really needs to tidy up toss because in in my mind actually her toss uh, her second serve is excellent but the toss is a little bit too far over her head behind her and having to make that excessive back bend causes your injury problems if you're not careful to four double faults now Maddox Sands sent that one back with interest and Vandaway in a jam at love 30. And we're taking a little bit off of first serve. It's pretty speedy, but uh, right into the hitting zone. Once again, right into the hitting zone of Matic Sands. She's returned well. Mm -hmm. Drawing triple break point after Matic Sands cashed in on three of five. Break chances in the first. Tough serve, very deep, very spinny, and a good pass. Vandaway broken at 15. Maddox Sands continues to 
play very tenacious and thoughtful tennis. Now up a set and a break to love here in the second. So few players will come into the net that just as they've been saying about the men's game, if somebody comes in and knows what they're doing at the net, it puts so much pressure on the opponent who is not used to having to make passing shots. 15. And all the more impressive to see Maddox Sands move this well, considering she had her second hip surgery last April. The first one was a labral tear. And I'm not sure if they both surgeries were on the same hip. Oh, yeah, nice, easy serve. And that was crisply placed at 95 miles per hour. Good for her first ace of the match. She's been up at 114, but slightly different type of serve that previous one. Not a very mature match, I would say, that Coco is playing so far. Whereas the opposite can be said for Matic Sands. Great return. 14-15. There haven't been too many errors from her. Okay. Once more, shining with the serve and volley. A hold of 30 to consolidate the break. Maddox Sands on a roll. Three love here in the second. If Coco Vandeweghe is going to stay alive here at the 2015 U.S. Open, it's going to take a monumental comeback. She's only picked up two games in the match, down a set to break. Love three. Here in the second set, as Bethany Maddock Sands has played impressive tennis this afternoon. Well, you can look at it that she's only one break down, but I can't say that she's totally found her own game yet, Coco. Thank give her a little you break, you know, so she goes ready. out in the first round against another American who, and the pressure was on Sloan, not her, and she comes with, up with a big upset, and then you have to regroup, and sometimes the next one where you expect it to win is harder. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Quite please, and take seats.
reported in that service winter at 115 miles per hour. And anyway, bogged down by far too many unforced errors. And that looked like a very straightforward, simple, conservative serve, which just made it. <laughs> But either way, it was the right idea. Because Coco has not played extraordinary tactical tennis in this one. Did it touch a racket or was that a, an ace? Take another look. Maybe it did touch a racket, so you can't classify. Well, you can't classify it as an ace. <laughs> She'll take the point. Yeah. Looking to tally for the first time here in the second set. She's not a bad volleyer, but certainly not the same sort of hand skills at the net as uh, Bethany has shown us today. indecision of where she's going to hit the shot. I'm seeing from Magic Sands real purpose and everything that she hits, even if it's a fairly neutral shot like that, Magic Sands knew that she just had to keep it back deep. Sands has converted four of seven break chances in the match. And is trying to grab this one by the throat. No doubt about that. Second ace of the match to erase the break chance. It's almost like that was the first serve that I really saw her thinking, well, I'm going to, I need to hit serve in this particular spot. I'm not sure that I saw that in. Yeah, Ampa doesn't know either. Technology will solve it for us but that much. It's, it's always a, the, the line right in front of the umpire is usually the hardest one for them to see exactly. Another break point. Yes. 
Coco van der Wey hustles with her feet a little bit. Uh, shots of you are know, beautiful. I would think with Craig Cod, and that will be the main thing that they work on. Oh. Able to navigate that one in. And away. Focuses when she needs to. Overcomes a couple break points, and she's on the board here in the second set. Well, there were certainly a couple more thought out points there from Coco Way, uh, Van der Way. So hopefully she's settling down. before it's too late. Hey. Interspersed with not very good shots. So many looks at the second serve of Maddox Sands, but hasn't done much with those opportunities. 22 and four Sarah's in the match compared with only eight for Bethany. And I think that Bethany can't get greedy with her sorties to the net. Maddox Sands only up the single break here in the second. I think it's a, a pretty good idea for her to come into the net, but you know, she doesn't have to make a winner of the first volley. She can just play basic good net play like that. Oh, and then a miscue. Game points for the second time. Takes it with the ace. It's all working for Bethany Maddox Sands. Second ace of the match. 4 1, up a single break here in the second.
Karen Armstrong, winner of this match, moves on to the third round. Taking on the winner of the match going on right now on Ash between Serena Williams and the Dutch qualifier, Kiki Bertans. But for Coco Vandeweghe, she has to focus on the task at hand now. Bethany Maddox-Sands has been the much better player today. 6-2, the line score in the first. Up a break here as Vandeweghe has to find some answers at 1-4. Maddox Sands not winning her service games as efficiently as she was earlier on because uh, Coco Vandeweghe is actually getting into the match, but she's got a lot of catching up to do. Constantly waiting for the crowd to settle down. Every changeover. Oh. Yeah, there's no question, Vandeweghe with the serve, possesses one of the best weapons on the WTA, needs it here. Yep, yep. So depressing when you hit a fantastic looking serve like that and it's just a late call, you think you've served a, a virtual ace and not sure if she challenges it, she has to go all the way back and serve a second serve if she's wrong. You heard the confirmation from Anya Craig with the yep, yep, clearly long. Yeah, it was a little bit late. Difficult call, though. She did well to hit such a good second serve then. Pressure really on Coco Vanderway not to. Hitting good serves. Tremendous effort to get that serve back and what Matic Sands is doing so well is just hanging on to the difficult balls, making sure she gets them back in court to possibly get an error from Coco. Matic Sands with the pass and here's another large break points. 30, well, again, so much credit to Maddox Sands. Knew exactly what she was doing. Knew she was up and against difficulties with that serve. Maddox Sands has converted four of nine break chances. She'll see the second serve. Taking a chance, stepping way in, and this is a big serve. Yeah, really well done, Coco, to hang in there. Yes. Being threatened on the second serve and coming up with such a good one and uh, taking the bull by the horns and just crushing this forehand. Oh, dear me. When you saw how well Matic Sands hit her passing shot, taking her time, knowing where she was going to put it and not over hitting it. And then on the other side of the net, there was just a rushed attempt. And now look at the score. Yeah. 
Final hand. Maddox Sands. A critical break. Fifth time in the match. Vandeweghe has been broken. Maddox Sands looking to serve her way into the third round of this 2015 U.S. Open. And a potential matchup with none other than Serena Williams, which I'm sure she would, or either of these players would enjoy it. I mean, I thought Van der Wey would actually be really excited if she could get through by the, that prospect. Maybe she was looking ahead too much. seems to me that Coco Van Der Wey was underprepared for this match. This was always going to be a very tough match for her. Matic Sands, a lower ranked player. But Matic Sands was a wild card. With a ranking of 101, I thought she'd get in, but maybe it wasn't as high when they made the draw. Oh. And just when you think that Magic Sands is going to get no, nervous and it could be faltering herself, Coco Van Der Wey just hands her a gift. And that truly has been the story of the match. Maddox Sands merely two points away. <laughs> Service winner for match points. A couple to utilize here. Uh, it's a moment to save her for Bethany Maddox Sands. Clearly, Coco Vandewey did not play her best tennis, but Maddox Sands is moving on to the third round here at the 2015 U.S. Open. Really brilliant performance by her. She came out, she knew what she had to do. She, on this hot, steamy day, she was cool, calm, and collected, and uh, she really deserved such an outstanding win. And in her 13th main draw appearance here at the Open, advancing to round three for the very first time in singles. As for Vandewey, we said it at the start of the match, such a wide spectrum in terms of effort and results on a daily basis, and today she just didn't have it. Well, I would think that the main uh, problem for her is uh, really getting herself correctly psyched up. Coco, getting, she needs to get her toss more consistent on her serve because what a waste of a fabulous serve when she makes as many errors on it. And certainly her footwork, she's got to improve. She's a tall girl, and sometimes it's harder to get your feet into position. But you can't, cannot take away the situation from Matic Sands. Quality win for the veteran. She's standing by with Andrew Krasnick. Bethany, some uh, tremendous tennis from you today. Talk to us a little bit about what was working. I know it was a lot. No, Coco's an awesome player. We were actually practicing earlier this week, and she's playing big. I mean, she serves huge. I think she hit 118. I was trying to get one faster than her, but I don't think I got it. <laughs> Um, but no, I felt really good, you know, moving great. I play my game. I try and come to net, but it was, it was a great day today. Aggressive play, coming to net. Talk to us a little bit about all your success in doubles. Is that giving you the courage and, and the strength to come up to the net when you're maybe not always wanting to? De well, I kind of want to come to net all the time, but no, I love being up there. I'm really comfortable uh, up there. I feel like it puts a lot of pressure on some girls, but yeah, it's, it's my game and, you know, I'll go out playing that way or I'll win playing that way. Okay, 13 main draw appearances here at the U.S. Open. This is the first time through to the third round. That's outrageous. Come on. <laughs> you know what? 30 is the new 21. I'm 30 this year. <laughs> but I have to say, 
coming here, I know I was playing American today, but the crowd out here is awesome. I mean, this is why we play tennis, is for these crowds like this. Amazing, you guys are awesome. Way to go, congratulations to you. You know, next round, there's a chance you may be taking on the number one player in the world. Uh, got nothing to lose, right? Awesome, I haven't played her in a long time. Oh, she's a friend of mine, she's playing great, she's going for a world record, uh, but you know, I'm gonna be there. All right, and you will be there for sure. We don't know if you, that's what you're playing yet, and all due respect, but uh, we wish you the best of luck. Bethany Maddox-Sands, everybody, let's hear it for her.